Welcome to another Smurd P video and here we are talking about Death of X issue 3 and yes before we get started there is going to be spoilers in this video so if you don't want to hear anything switch it off uh, so let's start with issue 1 in this mini series which has got four issues in it with Madrox being killed by a Terrigen Miss from the Inhumans. We don't actually know why the Inhumans released it. And yes, there are fireworks in the background, so I do apologize. So that was one of the things that I wanted to know because when, when we were reading Extraordinary X-Men and all that stuff at the beginning, we felt like it was perhaps something that Cyclops had done that, that caused Mpox, etc., etc., and mutants dying. And in reality, the Inhumans seem to have released it and they're just rolling with it, just into the Earth atmosphere. And obviously it came to light when Madrox died that actually it affects mutants. So from that we got it, we got, you know, we moved on into issue two where Cyclops was basically through the first two issues planning, plotting what his next move was going to be. And we end up with Storm going to Spain with the Inhumans and trying to help. And in the end, the Inhumans basically, they just put them to sleep. And I think they did it for a good reason. They were trying to stop riots. However, they put the X-Men to sleep. Now Cyclops sees that as an infringement of, of his kind, etc. You know, you're, you've basically... Wage, you've already re de declared war on us by releasing this mist, telling us it's all safe when it's not, and now you're 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 just taking us out, so to speak. So we're moving on to issue three, and this is the cover: Cyclops and Emma Frost, which is quite a nice cover. And I like this; kind of says it all, I guess. <coughs> So throughout this issue, uh, there's what happened in like the last issue, which I've kind of run through already, so I don't want to bore you. And these are the members in it, so we get these guys towards the end, the Inhumans. Now I think what irritated me, I'll get into it in a sec, sorry. Uh, first of all, we got Emma Frost, she's getting Magneto on the team side, and basically this down at the bottom, they're all kind of unconscious and Magneto said, okay, I'll kind of help you, you know. And he was part of Scott's revolution until I guess he realized that Scott basically had a, a nervous breakdown. So this is what irritated me. These guys are celebrating and pretty much that's their only role in this issue. So yeah, so celebrating and they're talking about giving this dude a name and you know, I don't really care for the Inhumans. I'm reading the Uncanny Inhumans, but I don't care for them. They're not, you know, I, I read X-Men comics. So, you know, if you like Inhumans, that's cool as well. So basically, we've got all these guys not out and they're just trying to, it just kind of irritates me. And then we've got Emma Frost and Magneto agreeing to go to Madrid. So basically, I guess Scott Summers at this point realizes he needs a diversion to go through with whatever plan he is planning, which I guess leads to his death and probably other X-Men's death is my understanding. And also why this is going on, we also have the Cuckoos. Cuc oh my God, I'm sorry if I've said that completely wrong. Yeah, Cuckoos? I don't know what that actually means. I need to look that up. But they go to see this dude in England where I'm from so that's cool so I don't know who this dude is but apparently the X-Men saved him and his mother many moons ago and Storm and the young X-Men or all new X-Men uh, that's Angel they start all waking up and they're all alive and they're all happy and they go to confront the Inhumans so in this issue you have um, a promo She's clearly getting her own story, and the Hulk looks a new colour. So that's cool. Not really read those things, but 
you know, that's cool. So they confront the Inhumans. Which is cool, I like this. And you know what, I like Storm Tenet how it is. This is the storm that I like. You know, not the storm that we've seen in recent years, the Scott Hayden storm. So it's kind of cool. And then, basically, I'm sorry if I, I don't usually jump around like this. I usually do one panel at a time, so I'm sorry. So Magic comes in, she steals a dude, the dude that pretty much put everyone to sleep. So that was part of the plan for Magneto and Colossus and Wolfsbane and Wolfpath and Rockslide to arrive. Which is cool. And he doesn't wait around. He pretty much puts them all in here. Including Storm. So he's, he's not prepared to mess around. Because he feels perhaps Storm may go the other way. She has in the past. So you know. Why not do it again I guess. And then back in England. This is pretty much where we finish up. They're all gathering. And they've got this guy. So this guy is clearly Cyclops' trump card. I don't know what for. I've never heard of him. If you guys have heard of him, please tell me who he is because I have no idea. So, but I guess it makes sense for it to be an unknown. And then we end with this. So, some flat fire in the Extraordinary X-Men was basically blamed for part of what Scott is. Uh, him and Magic are clearly around. I'm trying to decide who... Is that Layla Miller? Because I was wondering where she was because I was really annoyed that Madrox was on Mer Island. It's like, well, where the hell's Layla Miller? So, I think... You know what? I cannot tell who these guys are. Um, they're in different uniforms that I haven't seen. So, you guys can tell me who they are. Because clearly, you know, things have changed. And then this is obviously Volume 4. So, it basically says it all. Um... And I really hope that this isn't how it happens. Scott Summers, in my mind, is a strategist. He's smarter than this. Either that or he's just trying to work his way around and it just goes wrong. So, but I guess we'll find out in the final volume. And if you haven't got him, build a figure, Juggernaut, which was always cool. I love that figure. And, well, there's stuff in the back. So, all in all, I think this is a very uh, yawn issue. If that makes sense, it's kind of all about planning, no real action. But then, you know, if if I go back to when I when I really like X Men comics in the seventies, you know, it was a steady pace with a bit of action. But the story was important to me. Always the story. The story's not any good. It doesn't matter. And I think so far the story for this, I think it was one of those things. Once again, they've built up this big hype and. Maybe they fought it through, maybe they haven't, maybe I'm just being too judgmental. But um, let me know what your thoughts are on Death of X Volume 3 if you read it, if you're getting it. But you know, I do love this colour, I love this, this is pretty awesome. So, that's it, Death of X Volume 3. Thank you and have a good evening.